Good morning. Welcome uh, to this uh, second edition for the cycle of exchanges of experiences for family farming. Um, we'll be starting in two minutes, but uh, let me say that, that we will have simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, French, Arabic, and Portuguese. So uh, you uh, click the button at the bottom of the screen, uh, choose uh, the language of your preference. So we'll have an interesting exchange with the panel members and uh, the audience. So use the chat pod for uh, Q&A, as well as the Q&A uh, uh, se uh, section. At the end of the session, we'll have the opportunity to exchange uh, ideas and opinions. Uh, let me thank uh, for your availability and your interest for joining us. This is an activity uh, is part of the FAO's uh, effort to support the implementation of the United Nations family farming at the global level. We'll develop it through the regional technical platform on family farming, facilitated by the FAO Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm Pedro Boareto. I'm a project coordinator at the Regional Office and the specialist in family farming. I will be chairing this uh, session together with our panel members and uh, attendees. Uh, what's a technical regional uh, platform? This is a in global initiative uh, facilitated by the FAO Office for Latin America and the Caribbean in coordination with the Family Farming Parliamentary Networks and Communication for Development Unit and aims at uh, generating spaces for dialogue and exchange of experiences to promote technical innovations, as well as to link solutions from the various regions uh, for family farming. This series of uh, technical exchange cycles aims at promoting cooperation and the exchange of experiences, making as a reference the pillars of the global plan of action for the decade uh, and also the priorities outlined in Latin America and the Caribbean in the, in the latest uh, dialogues, especially in the Charter of Santiago of the Chile in 1922. In 2022. Space will be used to share lessons learned and challenges encountered in the development of family farming registries. And, and the strength uh, and in their link with policies to strengthen the sector around the world uh, for the benefit of the various uh, development agendas of the multiple countries involved. Last year, we had the first edition. Uh, it was the first time we connected experiences for all over the world to discuss uh, family farming records, which is this session is fully available in our website, where you can uh, where you can access the recordings of the cycle as well as uh, the recordings for this session. This second uh, edition, uh, we're proposing to discuss the dimension of uh, market access for family farming. This is a key aspect related to the strengthening of this sector and mechanisms and tools that allow this access to uh, be accompanied, accompanied by the recognition of the cultural wealth and diversity of family farming products. In addition, to being connected to the multiple strategies uh, for uh, development and inclusive rural transformation without leaving anyone behind. And within this uh, context, this uh, new cycle started last month uh, where we had the role of public procurement mechanisms in this process of social construction of markets and uh, how the sustainable inclusion of uh, family farming in markets uh, through these markets uh, is directly connected to the ability to face the challenges posed by global development agendas. 
to uh, uh, this uh, first uh, session. We're honored to have the presence of the Deputy Director of uh, FAO's Food and Nutrition Division, uh, Nancy Arbuto, as well as a colleague from the School Feeding Coalition, provided as uh, inputs on uh, what are the main uh, global agendas and how this uh, public procurement mechanism can offer solutions and uh, responses, uh, as well as the emphasis on the role of family farming in these processes. We have seen how from the Ministry of Social Development to Brazil, they have structures of uh, the different public procurement programs, such as the food acquisition program and the existing governance mechanisms to guarantee the participation and institutional articulation of different government institutions and also the participation of social people of the initiatives. And the, we had the opportunity to recognize the role that producers organizations uh, have in facilitating farmers' access to these uh, markets, but also in providing services to ensure the sustainability of family production. We were able to learn about the experience of Burundi and the, and the Confederation of Associations of Agricultural Producers for Development. Uh, the contents of uh, this session uh, are available in the platform website, which will be shared in our chat bot. But this second session, the idea is to continue to deepen the discussions by look, looking at two experiences. Um, we have uh, with us uh, Colombia and Guatemala. We want to learn about the existing mechanisms in those two countries and the main tools used to better connect family farming production and, and public uh, procurement. But before starting, again, I want to remind you that after the presentations, we'll have the opportunity for Q&A, delve on the cases presented. So take your notes, uh, use the chat pod and the Q&A pod, and again, so we have a simultaneous impression in English, Spanish, Arabic, and Portuguese to facilitate the dialogue. So to start this session, uh, we are pleased to do uh, the presence of Arnoldo Campos, so bring some elements that support the discussions and parts that we'll be promoting in this cycle, highlighting the importance of uh, the different tools uh, for the implementation of uh, procurement uh, uh, programs and uh, are linked to, to an enabling environment for the social productive inclusion of family farming. Arnoldo is a professional who has been actively collaborating with different international agencies such as FAO, UNDP on issues such as healthy and sustainable food systems, sustainable development, climate change, fighting uh, with a view on uh, fighting poverty and uh, family farming strengthening. His work is a focus on the development and promotion of innovations in the management and implementation of programs, projects, and actions undertaken for healthy and sustainable food systems. Arnoldo, uh, thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I'll give you the floor for 20 minutes. And four or five minutes before you exhaust your time, I'll let you know. Thank you for being here with us. It's a great uh, pleasure, Pedro. I hope you can hear me well. It's a great pleasure to share this reflection with you. This is an issue that I've been working on for quite a while, ever since uh, the beginning of the 2000. Uh, I am here in Brazil, and uh, I am uh, working uh, where we began the first um, public procurement uh, program in Brazil, the Ministry of Agricultural Development, and we are working on a new development uh, stage. I'll uh, follow a roadmap, but this is simply for me. I am thinking uh, about the fact that this is a dialogue, that we want to highlight certain points, and that, and that subsequently we'll move on to a, a Q&A 
a dynamic Q and A session. We spoke about enabling tools uh, for program for public procurement programs and uh, policies in this uh, session. I am always uh, working, providing advice work and acting as a consultant in this area. And the first uh, thing that we have to work on is to understand the general context of this initiative, because often uh, that uh, this initiative is is one point uh, within uh, governments, within a single ministry, within a, an undersecretary's office, uh, within a single coordination. And that is where an initiative is launched uh, in order to develop a public procurement for family farming. Now, by as a result of its own nature, this is a, an initiative that will necessarily involve multiple stakeholders uh, at a multi-sectorial level. It is very difficult to develop something like this uh, with one single sector, with farming or with a coordinating department or with an undersecretary's office. Uh, this will necessarily involve a large number of people. So, what is the context? Who are the stakeholders? Uh, within each uh, institutional structure, how is this issue being dealt with? How are the um, heads of each institution viewing this issue? What is their capability to enter into a dialogue with other key stakeholders uh, when it comes to an initiative? If we're, if we're talking about school meals, for example, in most cases, uh, we normally begin with that, uh, school meals uh, programs, uh, which uh, uh, obtain their products from family farming. What is the dialogue? Who are the key stakeholders? Well, uh, this ability to understand the context is extremely important uh, because sometimes uh, there is a great ambition behind this, uh, but with a political dialogue capability which does not uh, live up uh, to that ambition. So first of all, we must conduct uh, a work which involves coordination, uh, the construction of a single vision so that we can subsequently go out into the field and begin to work on this. When we go out and seek uh, support, uh, to develop an initiative, we must necessarily create a technical group, a discussion group, a space where uh, we will be able to build uh, the initiative, um, the public procurement initiative, viewing the, the various components uh, that are required for this initiative. And each one faces the challenge of responding to uh, each one of these components. And the first uh, uh, component, uh, an essential element for a public procurement program, is the, a diagnosis of the situation. So if, for example, we are talking about school meals, uh, which is normally where we begin with this. Uh, what is this public procurement uh, program like? Uh, the program that we want to exer exert an influence with? What is the legal, legal and operational framework uh, that is in force? We must uh, conduct a critical analysis of this because if we don't analyze the legal framework, nothing will subsequently work uh, because without uh, a legal regulations or regulatory uh, regulations, if they don't enable uh, procurement uh, from uh, public farming, well, this simply won't work. So we must uh, view the opportunities uh, and if we don't uh, find them, well, that is a problem and we must provide a legal and operational type of solution. Each country possesses a design in Brazil because of its experience often uh, goes to countries and imposes its own operational design. Uh, uh, but each country has its own uh, reality. They don't buy food, uh, they buy food services, and that changes everything. Who provides a service? What is the logistics behind that? Uh, do schools have the adequate uh, uh, structure uh, to prepare the food and so on? Or must food be pre-prepared? So, 
I, I, uh, uh, are there uh, suppliers for schools or not? And therefore, we must have that that mapping, that di that uh, legal and operational diagnosis, which is fundamental in order to know where we stand with this initiative. Now, what are the key stakeholders involved in this uh, school meals operation or uh, the procurement of food uh, to face up uh, to hunger and so on? Uh, we need to map uh, the operation from the beginning to the end, uh, involving the key stakeholders are the roles uh, of the private sector, how enterprises or companies uh, participate, uh, which companies we're talking about. Sometimes we have policies for uh, very small enterprises, and sometimes we can work uh, with a link between small family uh, producers and uh, uh, suppliers. We must have a permanent consultation and dialogue with uh, when it comes to public procurement program so before we we, we suggest this, uh, we must listen uh, to all of them. And going back to the example of uh, um, school meals procurement, who works on that uh, in developing countries uh, or countries that have a low level of development? Uh, well, they face uh, an enormous amount of problems and family farming people add a new challenge because it is already a challenge to provide uh, school meals uh, for students, uh, for children, for young people, and saying we must uh, purchase from family farmers and therefore we must understand uh, the demand. We must know how family farming can be part of the solution uh, to, to face up to the challenge of school meals. So often people have a perspective uh, saying no, uh, school meals and family farming is very important and they try to impose their vision, but they are the ones that demand this. Uh, they, and this is a program that involves uh, thousands of challenges and how family farming can be a solution to these challenges and not an additional problem. And so this initial stage of understanding the context of entering into the dialogue with stakeholders, of conducting a diagnosis of how everything is working is fundamental. In addition to uh, the procurement and in terms of the supply, well, we want to buy, but what is it uh, that we have? Uh, what are the, uh, what groups of producers do we have? Do we have cooperatives, associations? What products or what food can they supply? And uh, how is this food faring in terms of uh, uh, health uh, and sanitary conditions, uh, legal conditions, and so on? This diagnosis must also encompass uh, the whole issue of uh, the supply of family farmers, the situation of the country or of uh, the local area where that is happening, because uh, sometimes we define an ambition which uh, states uh, that we are capable of guaranteeing all of the food that is needed, and yet uh, they don't have a an adequate supply in place, or um, there may be a potential uh, capability, but we still need to work on that. So this diagnosis is fundamental before the proposals, and once we have conducted this diagnosis, which is a tool that must be included in any methodology, with a, a time frame and with responsible persons in the different components and stages of a good diagnosis, we must subsequently define the policies and uh, plans of action to support implementation because this is, this is not merely an, a procurement action. Uh, that defines, well, I am going to purchase this. This is not something as immediate as that. We must have policies in place in order to prepare uh, purchasers. In other words, uh, the operators of uh, those purchases, uh, they must be committed. Uh, to this solution. Uh, they must uh, know the new regulation that is being proposed or the new uh, operational formulas that are underway. They must be duly trained uh, to do this. Uh, they must be knowledgeable of what is being done. And therefore, uh, this uh, work has to be undertaken so that pur purchasers are sensitive uh, to the issue of uh, family farming so that they may be aware of this uh, reality. So 
The, the, it's not, this not, not simply involves the definition of a law. Now we have a law, a way of conducting this procurement. No, we have to prepare purchasers, uh, and train them, and also define the policies, programs, actions, budgets, technical teams that uh, will be uh, providing the training and qualifying family farming for the requirements, uh, for the demands and needs in terms of uh, quality compliance. Uh, be it uh, either in terms of the food products or in terms of the records, the fiscal aspects or the legal aspects that are demanded when uh, public procurement is uh, conducted. This is not an informal uh, procurement. Uh, normally, public procurement involves a necessary um, bureaucracy, and therefore it is fundamental to define the policies uh, that uh, will prepare and support the demand and uh, the servicing of school meals. And uh, in general terms, uh, what is required is a change in the legal framework uh, to a certain extent and at a certain level. Often a law has to undergo certain changes so that it, uh, so that uh, procurement uh, may be conducted uh, from family farmers. Farmers, uh, I am in a country that for the past two years has been seeking to conduct um, procurement from family farmers, but the law has not changed uh, and the law has no space to conduct uh, direct purchases from family farmers. And therefore, those that uh, are at an operational level are unable to meet uh, the regulations. Uh, they have to comply with uh, the existing regulations and therefore the legal framework is important. We must suggest uh, changes in the legal framework. If there is a law, well, we must enter into a dialogue with uh, the uh, Congress uh, men and women where laws are created. And without a dialogue with them, laws cannot be changed. And therefore, the government may be in favor of this, but uh, they have to be involved. And therefore, we have to define these policies, programs, actions uh, that uh, are related uh, to the programs so that will be supported and uh, qualified. But uh, this aspect, which involves uh, legal legal frameworks uh, needs uh, to be developed. And uh, with a clear proposal in place, that involves a whole process, uh, the road that has to be followed by a legal framework uh, so that it can end up by being an, uh, a proposal that is finally approved. And therefore, this dialogue at all stages of a bill uh, to create a technical proposal, which involves uh, discussing with the uh, responsible committees uh, within uh, parliament, within the legislative uh, discussing with uh, the, the different leaders uh, determining who will uh, take on board uh, this proposal and uh, take this uh, up to the stage of approval involves a one-year or two-year process, but without a legal change, without a, an adequate legal framework, it is practically impossible to implement these uh, changes uh, that are uh, necessary. It begins with the law, but subsequently it involves a decree. So uh, the law is normally a kind of umbrella. It's a fundamental tool, but often uh, countries have a, a law involving uh, procurement from family farmers, but it is not implemented because it is a law that is uh, uh, not applicable or that lacks uh, the implementation tools, which are the decrees and uh, regulatory uh, resolutions of each entity that uh, outline the operation of how this will work in practice. And so it is fundamental that whenever we deal with the idea of a legal framework, that we don't simply uh, end uh, with uh, the creation of a law, because uh, the experience that we have in Latin America is that we have many laws uh, on uh, family farmer farming and uh, public procurement, but subsequently we lack uh, the implementation tools that are fundamental. And therefore, we must analyze how we can have the regulatory tools uh, that are required 
and uh, for the whole and likewise for the whole implementation stage and often and uh, to round up often we have a we feel that a family farm farming has to comply or has to do everything for example if the demand of the purchaser is a food service that implies that, that a kitchen has to be in place or uh, an industrial kitchen has to be in place and a lot of people have to be working on that and uh, there are a whole series of regulations related to, to quality um, uh, to related to temperature logistics uh, to packaging um, how will the food be sent uh, to the place where it is going to be consumed? So there are a whole series of details. And uh, some people think that family farmers are going to do everything. But uh, there we find uh, private companies to do this that are specialized in food services. And sometimes uh, we do not promote, uh, we do not encourage the fact uh, that uh, legal frameworks uh, have a provision which involves establishing a link with uh, the association of uh, food service providers, be it a logistics provider, a transport provider, or a provider of food services uh, that uh, will help, uh, or likewise a supplier that will consolidate the various uh, areas uh, that uh, will be involved in this and uh, how to organize uh, the storage the packaging, uh, all the uh, hygiene and cleanliness aspects of the product until that uh, product is uh, ready to be uh, obtained by the purchasers. So there is a wide range of possibilities of uh, these uh, uh, tools that establish a link or that uh, create uh, different uh, seals. I always say that when we don't conduct a direct uh, purchasing of uh, food, because often uh, and we're talking about services, uh, that, uh, that this has a seal so that those participating in the bidding process, uh, uh, that they may have a regulation of how this is going to involve family farmers. And therefore, these seals, uh, these uh, links uh, may, be, may enable uh, family farmers to reach uh, school meals uh, so that they can become a part of the supply chain of uh, the public procurement of food without uh, demanding that uh, they have all, that they can conduct all the different stages. Often we're talking of uh, fragile associations not completely formalized yet that lack uh, financial capabilities, that lack uh, investment and infrastructure in order to do everything that is required uh, for the uh, for uh, school meals in a school that involves uh, many demands uh, that are often very fair and necessary. So it's important uh, to have a, an adequate uh, design for the reality of each demand of each purchaser because each purchaser is aware of his or her own needs, uh, as occurs with the private sector. Those that purchase are always right, and therefore family farmers must understand uh, these different designs uh, on the part of uh, purchasers so, so that they can have a feasible uh, formula in place uh, in legal terms, in regulatory terms, uh, so that family, terms, uh, family farming can achieve these results and thus establish supply chain with uh, family farmers, often family farming, and this, uh, uh, to conclude, uh, can uh, provide uh, food with very low processing levels, and that is very easy, uh, food that is minimally processed. Often they are the most nutritious food, the ones with the highest nutritional quality, and therefore family farmers can focus on that type of food something which uh, industrialized, uh, complex industrialized uh, uh, food uh, are not able to do, and thus to make the, this food much uh, simpler, such as uh, fruit, uh, vegetables, legumes, um, different types of grains uh, may thus uh, reach uh, purchasers uh, from closer by and in a much uh, simpler 
uh, operational manner. And those are some of the stages that we find. So as tools, as enabling tools, we need to know, we need to be aware of the context. We can, uh, cannot underestimate the context often. Uh, where the initiative begins, uh, well, they that uh, sector lacks political power, and therefore we must uh, create a kind of spiral that uh, grows involving the uh, leaders of each entity until we reach a government and uh, Congress, where uh, the congressmen are deputies and senators uh, who will define uh, the legal frameworks. And therefore, this creation of awareness, uh, the, this mobilization, this commitment on the part of stakeholders and the understanding of this reality is a first fundamental stage where often uh, mistakes are made and uh, we subsequently face problems. The diagnosis that I referred to, well, it's fundamental to understand how the key stakeholders work, uh, what they purchase, how they purchase, where products come from, uh, what logistics is used, what prices, how prices are defined, uh, what are the demands, the private uh, uh, stakeholders uh, that take part in this process. And therefore, that diagnosis tool in terms of demand is fundamental. And what is uh, also important is the supply, what products they have, where it comes from, what regions they're located in, what level of organization they have, what challenges they have to overcome, so that subsequently we can begin to develop uh, proposals of a legal and operational framework, but also promotion and support policies, because... Uh, the mere establishment of regulations is not enough, and therefore we must have uh, action tools, uh, tech, what, what, what is the role of technical support, of credit, uh, what is the role played by training, investments, infrastructure, and so on and so forth are all necessary. In addition to fiscal aspects, uh, taxation aspects, uh, um, how that uh, is uh, designed, often that is a traditional fundamental tool. And based on that, to have an implementation plan in place, so the final tool is an, an implementation or an action plan. Uh, whereby each stage uh, is stipulated. This is not done in a short period of time. For example, in Brazil, when it comes to school meals, that took uh, six years uh, to develop. Uh, we uh, we designed the PA, a school meals program, in six months, uh, but to enable the education, the Brazilian educational system to accept the purchase of uh, family farmers, well, that took six years, and therefore the plan of action, the, the implementation plan is fundamental because there are a whole series and of necessary stages and steps uh, that have to be put in place uh, so that we can subsequently achieve the final objective, which is to have uh, family farmers as part of such an important market, enabling productive and social results uh, that are truly very important. Uh, thank you very much. I think I've uh, uh, concluded with my 20 minutes and I'll subsequently be available to continue uh, with whatever you may need in the next exchange. Thank you, Arnoldo, and thank you for your thoughts, which is uh, quite uh, aligned with our discussions, not only in this edition of the exchange cycle, but also with the uh, registrations. Uh, none of these uh, policies uh, should be out of the context. The context is key when thinking of uh, policies and programs on family farming, understanding the goals, the different stakeholders, mapping those stakeholders, and of course, thinking of uh, specific uh, mechanisms to facilitate the dialogue among them to put together a common strategy. And there, I believe, uh, how poli uh, public procurement programs are connected to with this uh, uh, common strategy. Uh, family farming, it's not uh, in isolation in this context. This uh, thought of uh, how tools are connected. Apologies, I think I lost my connection. I'm back on. Or just how the multiple tools are connected. The law and implementation tools, how the law has to be adapted to it. This is what we have seen in the, in the various countries in the region, but also when we have talked to other regions. And that is connected to the different cases. And, uh, 
we have here with us uh, Cesar Morales. He's the coordinator of the uh, school meals uh, from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. Uh, food and uh, livestock in Guatemala. And with an emphasis on uh, many of the uh, points that uh, Arnoldo elaborated on. Remember, we have simultaneous interpretation. Uh, and uh, remember, we could use the chat pod for questions and then your inputs. So, Cesar, uh, thank you once again for your time. You have uh, 12 minutes. Uh, I'll let you know when you have uh, five minutes left. Thank you once again. Okay. Just uh, make sure I my audio is working okay. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, always a pleasure to share with you the experience of uh, Guatemala along this uh, path on uh, family of uh, school uh, meals uh, related to public procurement. I was very much identified with the previous uh, participation, Arnoldo, Arnoldo Campos, really. I, 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 I feel close to this situation. Uh, let me share with you what is it that we've been doing and how we've been doing it. And uh, let me share with you what is that that we are doing and uh, what we plan to do. I will be sharing my screen, if I may. As I said, uh, this is a program that's been around for six years on um, school meals uh, through the Ministry of Agriculture. But in Guatemala, this is a program has been in place uh, through the Ministry of Education around 50 years. We are young as, as the Ministry of Agriculture. We are young in this process of linking family farming to uh, public uh, procurement for school meals. This is something new for us. So we've uh, had, uh, we have uh, faced some challenges, but to put this thing into a context, let me say that the law started in uh, 2018, but uh, we produced the rules and regulations. Part of that, the regulation says that at least 50% of the products from uh, should come from a family farming. So for the preparation of the meals, the school meals, Law says that after five years, we'll have to meet uh, 60, 70 percent. The 70 percent should be procured from family farmers. This year, we're already working at this 70 percent uh, goal. This is really interesting because you will see how, economically speaking, Many farmers have started to evolve. But this is really important to know what has been the transition like, and many farmers are, are related to uh, selling to the school meals. Uh, in, in our ministry, we, we promote uh, more family farmers uh, in the business. We have also worked through the ministerial agreement 187-2023, this is a new typification of uh, family farmers. And with that, we've uh, said that uh, the approach of these uh, segments as part of the family farming may be linked to marketing and uh, procurement, which we didn't have before. This is a strengthening this uh, ministerial agreement, and uh, this is strengthening the linking process uh, for other farmers which were not considered as part of this program. However, this uh, agreement allows for uh, more producers to work with. We're also, the law also sets forth that for a, um, that, that one of the responsibilities of the Ministry of Agriculture, besides 
training and uh, technically assisting, uh, promoting uh, family farming, we need uh, some sort of a registry, a registry of all the family farmers related to the school feeding uh, program. Then our uh, authorities, which uh, first started on this uh, law, uh, they have little knowledge as to how to address this. And uh, our system started to keep this record, but with a certain weaknesses. We don't have a dependable registration. We didn't have a clear idea of what type of uh, farmer could be part of the program, nor we didn't know how to prepare and share this registry with the Ministry of Education, which is also part of the law. These are some of the um, Cesar, you're bringing up uh, to strengthen uh, the different processes and uh, is it okay now? No, it, it's okay now. It's okay now. Yeah, thank you. Stop working. Thank you. As I say, uh, with this registry, we have done some, uh, we'll make some changes, just you will see, which is strengthening the, the process of linking the family farmers and the market. We're not just, uh, this is not uh, feeding programs, school feeding programs. So we're promoting an organization and joining a market. Within this market, they can identify the, through uh, school feeding programs, but we're also promoting a different model. So this uh, linking uh, process is quite easy. Uh, in our Ministry of Agriculture, the, the structure of the ministry uh, allows us to have to be uh, to have a representative in the 340 municipalities uh, through the municipal agencies of rural development. At least uh, three individuals um, in, 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 the, in the multiple municipalities serving the groups, or the, the stakeholders groups. In this case of uh, farmers. The way to link them to the full feeding problem is uh, through these officials that will uh, sign uh, producers uh, in, but they have to they have to make sure that they have an excess capacity. When the registration was first implemented, they didn't say anything about who should could be part. This has been learned after the experience with that family farmers are offered uh, training on uh, are, 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 are about the law and the rules and, and, and regulations. But other than that, uh, how to uh, make it operational? It's important for them to know not only the lay the law, but how to address it, how to make the program work uh, and to be attractive uh, for them so that uh, it's not just uh, learning about the law. We've also trained them uh, for our, train our, our staff, tell them how the law operates, how the Ministry of Agriculture promotes uh, school meals and this link uh, between family farmers and public procurement. Therefore, producers, producers um, we let them, uh, we, we tell them that they have to produce, but also they knew they, they have to organize uh, themselves, put together a team, could be neighbors, could be family, uh, relatives, they need to uh, uh, group, collect, sort. Uh, this is something a bit uh, challenging for some. And they have to issue an invoice. Uh, uh, the tax culture in family farming in our country, it's challenging. Traditionally, uh, we don't use uh, invoices in, in this uh, uh, farming uh, market. There is a really 
No, do not. But this is a requirement for this problem. With these uh, trained producers, they have uh, to go to negotiate with the uh, uh, public school parents, uh, uh, parents' organization. We have nearly 35,000 schools around the country, and they all have uh, um, a parents' organization responsible for selecting negotiating and procuring from these uh, farmers. That's the way the law mandates, and this is how this has been uh, uh, made uh, operational. These are some actions implemented, only uh, some of them, uh, probably the most important. We have the registration system, registry system. We have that since uh, 2018. I mean, it could be better could be improved, but we have a trained and we offer technical assistance to registered producers and or potential suppliers who like to sell or a linking uh, with the school meals. We have uh, people supporting uh, uh, these uh, work. We train our staff to strengthen their capabilities because the law is uh, fairly New this uh, dissemination system was not familiar with the law. Didn't know how to link uh, these uh, with the school meals program. So it has been necessary to talk to them, train them. And besides that, we need to train uh, our staff with an approach uh, commercial associations, which is that something that strengthens uh, these uh, linking uh, uh, process. We also promote uh, 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 a working model called the CADER, CADER is the center of learning for development of uh, these uh, stakeholders. In this case, farmers with common interests that meet to build, to build knowledge and offer solutions to on marketing so that now we promote the strategy. Uh, I mean, this is a step ahead of learning, of producing, and now we teach them how to sell. That's part of the strategy. We produce an operational guide, which has been shared, uh, which has been circulated, to facilitate understanding of how to work on school meals, and how to share those ideas on an annual basis. Uh, the law requests us a report together with the Ministry of Education. We produce a report which is uh, sent to the Congress where we report on sales, on the development and challenges of the program. We done uh, a model, a marketing model for family farming. We have been promoting this uh, for two, the last two years in in Guatemala. It's are called networks uh, or, or family farming marketing networks. This is not new. Uh, we've just been identified something uh, that uh, happens naturally in the marketing of uh, agricultural products. We've taken elements uh, from the lessons learned among the groups and put together a model, a strategy, allowing us to replicate this uh, nationally. Clearly, what we have understood is that each department uh, is, in, is, uh, is individual. I mean, this model is a uh, work to, so that they can have some uh, 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 starting point, uh, uh, but, uh, but the local context will have to shape, uh, will have to enhance this, will allow farmers uh, to uh, uh, make it operational without uh, resistance. And we have conducted some contributions to the rules and regulations of uh, school meals law. Uh, this has not. This is a, a process that has not been completed. I um, mean, this has not been enacted. But we'll, we'll soon we'll have these updated uh, regulations where we have uh, 
we have uh, we, we were allowed other actions or well, the network uh, model was not considered initially now this will be part of this uh, update this is interesting this is the sales history of the school meals program first started uh, in 2020 where we started to uh, uh, build these uh, registry in quetzals and, 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 and usd around 750 quetzals to one dollar uh, this is the ex exchange rate but you can see that starting 2020 there has been a growth there's a commercial linkage of family farmers. Last year, sales uh, were quite promising, 702 million quetzals. That's around 90, 90 million dollars. This is not the total budget. In Guatemala, we have around 3.3 billion quetzals, which is around 425 million uh, dollars that's uh, what we have and uh, a history of what we've been doing in the last uh, two years children served 805,000 schools serve uh, 35 uh, that we have uh, we have 35,000 schools we're reaching 8,000 schools uh, serve uh, suppliers direct uh, direct suppliers we have a direct suppliers, those that will do the negotiation and the invoicing. But behind them, they need the support from their neighbors, their relatives, the family, which are also producers. And that's a, what, we call, what we call support providers, support uh, uh, suppliers. We have uh, around uh, 2,500. Uh, so we'll have uh, 25,000 people related to sales to uh, school meals. This is a table of the network as just described, the need to come organized, identify direct uh, suppliers, and then to identify the suppliers, indirect suppliers, which are those that support and strengthen with their products, the person who is uh, related or is linked to the with the school guatemala has made a significant uh, development in different departments this is a small chart this is uh these are the departments in green which are four today exceeding 50 percent uh, of uh, of the budget allocated to school meals is around 70% today. It has to be procured from family farmers. But we have four already exceeded that 50%, and we have 12 departments in the range of 25 to 50% of sales. We still have a gap that uh, has to be bridged, but uh, this is something we still have to work on. And as, a, and as, a, and, uh, and as a, they said before, we need analysis, we need coordination, understanding the role of the stakeholders, strengthening and facilitating those public procurements. In Guatemala, we have 22 departments. Uh, at present, uh, not that the other departments are not selling, but their sales are below 25%. Uh, I didn't include them here because we still have a department with is only at 10%. Uh, that department, one of the most difficult, one of the most challenging, where we need to strengthen not only procurement, but also strength, the institutional strengthening. That is why I was, uh, I felt very close to the, of my previous, uh, uh, the previous speaker. We have challenges and solutions. The implementation of the law for the last five years, we have been adding uh, producers We're, we are promoting through this uh, dissemination services for new uh, farmers to join the program through training explaining them what the program is the chat the advantages and uh, discuss the organization issues with them uh, especially organization for marketing 
yet another challenge is uh, food served in, in schools. Uh, when the law was enacted, uh, food were, uh, meals were served, but because of the pandemic, we had to adapt to everything, institutions, uh, farmers, agencies, and, and uh, uh, we had this, uh, this uh, we had this ration every 30 or 35 uh, days, the parents received uh, a bag with the uh, food items, which were thought could uh, meet the, the, the budget for, for feeding the children. Of course, that brought uh, different um uh, different challenges because uh, parents were not just for one kid, but for, for the whole family. So there's a certain reluctance uh, going back to the served meals. For farmers, which is uh, much easier, it's only once every 30 days now, they have uh, they have to negotiate differently. They have to link uh, the schools every two to three days to deliver the food, and that requires different logistics, uh, different uh, dynamics. That's a challenge. Uh, this this year, we are going back to the served meals, so we need to understand how it works. Uh, we need to promote uh, this. Uh, this is a fact that we're going back to the served meals model. Organizational processes, that's important to strengthen the association. Uh, we've done this through this uh, network uh, model. The challenge is the, is, uh, the tax. The fear many family farmers do. Um, they have to go through alliances with the superintendent, the tax authority. We have conducted training for family farmers, for our ministries of staff, so that we can easily and practically explain how to meet with the tax uh, obligations. It's not difficult once you understand it, but what we the, the biggest challenge here is to break, uh, I mean, to strengthen this uh, tax uh, culture. And in Guatemala, we have the institutional food uh, meals uh, task uh, groups. Uh, there is a representative, there is a local representative, there is a municipal representative, Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, this, this is the same. We have to strengthen uh, and support our representative. This is a this is a task force to articulate, to address difficulties, to facilitate processes, and not necessarily take them to the central level. It could be addressed uh, locally. Uh, we have a strategic. Uh, alliances uh, we have uh, we have a crs for instance uh, counterpart fao save the children um, apologies if are missing uh, some uh, just to try to summarize them most of them uh, they have very specific actions and focal actions however they, they have conducted training technical assistance uh, family farming uh, exhibitions to link uh, 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 school meals programs and farmers have uh, strengthened uh, our uh, the, our ministry's uh, staff and we are working now uh, closer with FAO with FAO, we have a project we are validating called the Single Registry of Family Farmers, or the RUA. This is a new uh, registry system to strengthen uh, the Ministry of Agriculture's uh, system, not only on family uh, our school meals, but also this is a quality registry uh, where we can identify the farming uh, potential. We can identify these uh, farmers with the various levels out of our classification. And uh, we can also be very specific on our uh, interventions. But this registry has a, a school meal module. And a priority was given to school meals, and this module will allow us not only to identify direct uh, suppliers, we can link uh, direct uh, suppliers and indirect suppliers. This is something we uh, were not able to do before. 
Now we could do that. And we can also identify what actions are possible with them. I, I believe I, I, I lost this. Yeah, we lost you for three seconds. But we have three minutes left. Okay. As I said, this system allows us to identify them, know them, but also uh, screen uh, them to guarantee data quality or guarantee the family farmer is actually a family farmer. This is actually a producer. It allows us to say that those uh, for farmers identify with them with their commercial potential and we can talk to them we can call upon them we don't have to go uh, uh, out there and ask uh, who has the access uh, the access production and uh, our our staff uh, have a specific uh, database uh, so that uh, they can go and visit those uh, farmers interview them they know where they are located what they produce they will discuss uh, specific topics, uh, specific needs of these uh, farmers. Services such as irrigation, um, uh, farming insurance. Those are topics which are important for us. And uh, each unit, each advice, uh, advice ministry uh, was uh, working in isolation. This is putting everything together, strengthening everything. So. This is at the end of my presentation, and uh, if you have uh, questions, of course, they're, 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 I, I, I will entertain them later. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cesar. Your, in, your experience uh, is very interesting, and you convey a very important uh, message from Guatemala in terms of how you structure these uh, school meals uh, program and the necessary tools, this link uh, with the registry. So if, uh, uh, and you mentioned this new registry and also existing registry said that, uh, as was mentioned by Arnoldo, enabled you to identify the context uh, of four <clears throat> family farmers, but also highlighting the training uh, work and training not only in terms of strengthening the understanding of uh, farmers, of uh, family farmers, of the process, but also institutional capabilities in order to provide sustainability to these actions. These are all fundamental elements uh, that uh, enable I, as to strengthen uh, the actions uh, of family farmers and linking them up with the public procurement programs. Uh, so training is indeed a very important issue and what you're doing in Guatemala is very important. And also this uh, um, aspect of uh, bringing these programs down to the level of territories is also very important. Now to continue with this session, we also we will also listen to the case of Colum Colombia. Before um, introducing the panelists from Colombia, I would like to remind you that you have uh, interpretation and that you can post your, your questions in the chat. Uh, we have already been receiving some, but again, I would like to invite you to interact uh, based on the very interesting experiences that we are listening to. Now I'd like to offer the floor to Jan Yase, who is an official of uh, the area for the uh, generation of capabilities and revenues of the Ministry of Agriculture of Colombia, and he is in charge of the public procurement area. I understand uh, that uh, we will also have uh, with us a representative of the Rural Development Agency of Colombia. I would like to thank Mr. Yasse for his uh, availability. And uh, you have 20 minutes for your presentation in uh, the chat. Of course, I will let you know that you have five minutes uh, left to conclude. Uh, Mr. Yasse, would you like to uh, share your presentation and uh, then uh, begin with your presentation? Thank you very much. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, to, for, uh, to our colleagues from the FAO for this invitation so that we can share with you the progress that we have achieved in Colombia within the framework of local uh, public uh, procurement of food. As Pedro said at the beginning, I will be accompanied by a colleague from the Rural Development Agency 
And, uh, and uh, uh, he en los en, en is with me here in order to share the implementation of uh, the law, the public procurement law that we have in place, because uh, the Rural Development Agency is our implementation arm when it comes to the implementation of these public policies, and that is why he is uh, accompanying me here today. Please uh, let me know if you can see my presentation okay. I apologize uh, uh, for not uh, having my camera on, but uh, because of uh, connectivity, I have uh, switched it off and will keep it off. However, I will try to open it up uh, at specific moments uh, so that you may know who is talking to you and who is interacting with you. So, I would now el, el, los temas de comercialización de la ASFC en Colombia nacen a raíz del acuerdo final de paz, el acuerdo final de La Habana, con la resolución 006 de, del 15 de enero del 2020, por el cual se adopta el plan de comercialización eh, que tiene como finalidad promoción de la comercialización de la producción de la economía campesina familiar y comunitaria, como les decía al principio, formulado en el cumplimiento de lo establecido en el punto 1.3.3.4 del acuerdo final de la Habana, el acuerdo final de paz. Este, este, este plan tiene un indicador en el marco de compras públicas locales de alimentos, que es el indicador A93, que consta de cinco fases. Ya mi compañero Edwin las hondará más adelante. Yo en este momento voy a hablarle sobre la fase 4 y fase 5, que la fase 4 es la realización de encuentros comerciales locales, ruedas de negocio entre oferta y demanda. Y la fase 5, seguimiento a los acuerdos comerciales firmados entre la oferta y la demanda. Así funcionaron nuestras compras públicas y, y así vienen funcionando eh, hoy en día. Eh, por todo el tema que, que hemos tenido en materia de nosotros le llamamos candados o cuellos de botellas para la implementación de la ley 2046. Entonces, eh, una vez eh, se adopta este plan, se empieza a trabajar en, en las dos estrategias que les dije. En agosto se sanciona la ley 2046, eh, que aquí se las tengo que que tiene eh, por objeto establecer mecanismos para promover la participación de pequeños productores locales agropecuarios y de la agricultura campesina familiar y comunitaria. Community farmers, so, when it comes to the public uh, procurement of uh, food, uh, that was in 2020. In 2021, we passed a decree whereby we regulated uh, this law and uh, here, and this involves uh, ministries and uh, the entities uh, that uh, form part of the implementation of this law. However, it, this law was passed in 2020, and, uh, and, before, and in 2023, the Technical Working Group uh, for Local Procurement of uh, Food was established, which is the guiding uh, aspect in our country in order to conduct a local procurement of food in our territories. Law 2046, as mentioned beforehand, uh, seeks uh, to establish mechanisms to promote the participation of small local uh, farmers uh, of uh, family and uh, community farming in the local public procurement uh, systems for food. Uh, the decree is uh, regulates uh, the um, agricultural, fishing, and rural development uh, 
sector related to the public procurement of food, and that is how our law is making progress. Now, what does uh, the local food procurement uh, law establish in Article 7 of, of Decree 248? Uh, this law uh, obliges uh, the uh, of mandates of the local purchasing of, of food to small uh, producers and its organizations in a minimum percentage of 30% of the total value of the resources of the budget of each entity that demands um, the food aimed at uh, local procurement. Now, what is uh, the other uh, benefit? Uh, well, all the subjects are mandated to comply with the law and they must design um, um, notes and menus with a cultural, territorial and uh, food habit approaches prioritizing uh, the supply with uh, local products. It is worthwhile highlighting that this uh, law mandates all public entities uh, mixed and private entities uh, to um, that uh, contract this uh, these services using the state uh, resources um, technical specifications well article 9 mentions that the national government within the framework of the technical working group for the public procurement of food in coordination within bima within a period of six months uh, was forced to design a technical um, information sheet that was not going to exclude uh, small and uh, family and community farmers in order to link them to this uh, public uh, pro food procurement uh, strategy. This law also mandates us uh, to promote and strengthen the economy of um, small producers and uh, the National Technical Working Group for the Public Procurement of Food and within the following six months uh, must uh, design and implement uh, financial and contractual mechanisms that are required so that the value of their sales be received uh, um, as soon as uh, the, the products are delivered. Now, talking about uh, this uh, law, well, this working group was established on the on the 21st of April of uh, 2023, uh, technical committees were put in place that as uh, uh, established by the law during the second session of this working group. Uh, and why did we create these technical committees? Well, because once we created uh, this uh, working group, uh, we realized uh, that we had countless barriers in order to correctly implement uh, the law uh, in view of the bottlenecks uh, that we had in territories or that uh, organized have in order to link up uh, to the direct uh, sales of food for uh, the market of local uh, food uh, procurement uh, markets. And therefore, we have been working uh, in an expand with an expand in an expanded working group uh, with. Uh, a number of um, family and community farmers. And uh, what we seek uh, is uh, to find uh, solutions with uh, family farmers uh, that are effective so that they may be linked uh, to this strategy of local uh, public uh, food procurement systems. And this has become a political space and has also uh, provided solutions for each one of the mechanisms. And now I would like to talk about uh, the uh, technical committees and uh, Within the framework of uh, implementing this law, we realized that we had to create them. We created five committees in all. The first one is the Committee on Financial and Contractual Mechanisms. A second committee deals with uh, quality and food safety. A third one dealing with the public uh, agri-food information system. A fourth committee is the administrative and regulatory one. And a fifth one devoted uh, to the monitoring and evaluation of compliance with the law. Now, why? was it that we created these committees well because we realized that uh, when the poder hacer la correcta implementación de la ley necesitamos poder en en este caso vincular qué pena poder en este caso vincular o tener un mapeo de los actores que van a ser parte de este ejercicio de implementación 
eh, un diagnóstico de los, de los actores y principalmente de los agricultores campesinos familiares y comunitarios de dónde están un mapeo de los programas que están obligados a vincular a estos sujetos a la estrategia de compras públicas locales de alimentos. También diseñamos un equipo técnico que está conformado por diferentes entidades del orden nacional que hacen parte o que de cierta manera tienen injerencia para que las compras públicas locales de alimento are involved uh, so that uh, small family and community producers uh, so that this may become effective and we conducted a regulatory review of those regulations and uh, of uh, those laws or decrees that prevent uh, the correct uh, implementation of uh, the law within the framework of uh, family and community farming and we are also providing technical support at present what we want to do is to develop uh, technical and organizational capabilities within the framework of the AS afc de lo que ellos que vayan en defensa that defend and acknowledge the processes that these subjects are uh, developing in territories so that this uh, may, as mentioned by my colleague Arnoldo, the first uh, presenter, so that this may become solutions and an added value uh, for these entities that demand food and preventing uh, family and community farmers from becoming an additional problem, but rather a solution for the implementation of the law. So within this framework, we have been holding discussions with them in order to develop uh, this uh, seal of uh, trust uh, and uh, to acknowledge uh, guaranteed participative guaranteed participative systems because we're all aware that com family and community uh, farming becomes a, a style or a lifestyle and we as governments uh, must uh, guarantee uh, this in the use and implementation of of their ancestral practices uh, throughout uh, this economic system so that we can thus change markets and uh, establish a local territorial development uh, focusing on uh, family and community farming. So in uh, the Committee on uh, Financial and Contractual Mechanisms, so we established a, a guide for the implementation of a payment upon delivery for small producers. And this, uh, and we generated, con, or we produced contractual obligations so that these entities that demand food may uh, link this in their contractual um, documents and guarantee payment upon delivery to small uh, uh, family ethnic and community producers. In the Committee on Quality and Food Safety, we adjusted the design and approval of the technical uh, data sheets and uh, instructions. So we designed um, also an evaluation of uh, small producers and uh, to link this to local food procurement systems and also uh, for family farmers and community farmers. So we provided technical uh, training and technical assistance the issue of the payment uh, registry for small producers of family farmers and they are at the very center of this uh, the self-consumption benefits well we began to make this much more dynamic uh, so that people could have the possibility 
of uh, generating that dynamic in territories. And as next activities, we have uh, we, we have a consolidated list of uh, food uh, procurement, uh, the approval and publication of these uh, information sheets, the review. Uh, with communities in each region to continue with our interinstitutional co coordination work. And we also need to have events to accompany the implementation by producers of these strategies that have been developed uh, by the working group about we need to provide, we need to accompany them in territories so that these uh, this strategy can be effective in territories. This is the new information uh, sheet that was uh, designed so that we could generate an instrument uh, that could be binding for all subjects when it comes to local food procurement uh, procurement and uh, in the production of this information sheet to world in colombia we had one information sheet per food and within this committee and within the national uh, working group for food procurement uh, we generated groups of food so that we could have a more effective exercise in this sense in the committee for the in the committee on the public uh, agri food information system I fully agree with this because if we are unaware of the situation of family farming, who the family farmers are, how they are faring in terms of training or in terms of technical assistance or in terms of organization, and if we are unaware of the status of their organization, whether they are associated in legal terms or whether they're organization possesses uh, standards enabling them to trade their products, we are not operating adequately. And so within that framework, we have been working in this committee in terms of designing the public uh, agri-food information system, enabling us uh, uh, to make a timely and effective decisions uh, linking these subjects uh, to the local food procurement strategies. In terms of the food information uh, system, uh, we have linked up uh, with the those that work on demand and supply. We subjected a proposed design. We established uh, some uh, high-level functional modifications. So this underwent a technical review and by those uh, that are mandated uh, by law to ensure that this design or that this system works so that we can make uh, the law operational. And this underwent a technical review by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and uh, the office, uh, the planning office and the uh, IT office uh, linking also the the Ministry of uh, Innovation of uh, IT in our country so that they could have a design in place enabling us uh, to obtain information from these subjects uh, to guarantee the correct uh, implementation of uh, public uh, food procurement. Uh, this document is being is undergoing a review and they will already have a roadmap uh, to begin to undertake these actions. Well, what are the next steps uh, for the system? Well, the Ministry of uh, Innovation in ICTs and the Ministry of Agricultural Development uh, are establishing their technical teams. Uh, they are drafting the work plan and submitting that and we'll submit that to the committee during its next session uh, and uh, they will submit that to a committee that will make uh, the will make the law operation when it comes to information systems so we will also uh, design the working groups to review the issue of uh, the financing of this system and other the requirements that may be necessary for this system to operate in an adequate uh, fashion when it comes uh, to its implementation and uh, the ministry will have a team in place 
that will be in charge of uh, the design of uh, of designing the software and the Ministry of Agriculture will have a technical team for the design and implementation of that system. Also within the framework of uh, the implementation of this law, when we wanted to review the regulation of all the um, regulations that hindered the implementation of the law, we found that the decree that uh, uh, regulates the law is the main barrier to have uh, an adequate implementation of the law. And so, the ICBF, which is uh, an important entity, sent uh, to our working group to our working group a justification for the regulatory uh, change with a draft uh, modification of the regulatory decree, the single decree for the um, agricultural sector, to modify uh, decree 248, uh, dated 2021, that regulates uh, law 2046, and also a bill that supplements. Uh, Law 2046, in order to recover incentives and uh, fiscal exemptions uh, for producers and to promote uh, the qualified participation of young people in agricultural production. The the committee uh, worked uh, during between 2020 and 2023. In the initial session, the idea was to establish a a review of all the regulation uh, and also to consolidate that with the contribution of various entities in order to provide effective solutions within the framework of uh, generating uh, guidelines or policy guidelines uh, capable of overcoming these uh, problems that we were facing. And uh, this was presented and shared uh, to the ICBF, which was adopted as a draft, as an initial draft to be studied, uh, to be discussed and coordinated. And then technical professionals and legal professionals have been provided in order to deal with uh, these uh, uh, drawbacks and to resolve them uh, through this uh, new decree. To replace uh, Decree 248, and this involves the participation of civil society through their organizations, and we also opened up uh, uh, a space in this working group so that they could also participate in the creation of this new decree. We made progress with the first uh, two articles of uh, the draft uh, decree, and this involved the definition of the small producer in order to modify the contents of Decree 1071 of 2015. Because now we're working on this new definition of the small producer, because here in Colombia, the small producer is, res is uh, defined by a concept uh, issued uh, by the National Commission of uh, Agricultural Credit and is estimated in, in uh, taxation units. And so the idea is to it was to have a wider ranging concept uh, so that that was not the only unit measure to define a small producer and other fundamental definitions uh, to be contained in the proposed uh, regulation. In this year, we held uh, some four sessions and in, well, in March, uh, we held uh, four sessions and in April, we held uh, two sessions for a total of six sessions of this committee uh, so far this year. Here, I would like to invite uh, my colleague to talk about the Committee on Pedagogy, Monitoring and Assessment of the Compliance of Law 2046, the exercises that we have conducted in our territories. And, uh, and he will explain the operation of this committee. Thank you very much. I think we have three minutes, no more than that. Well, we have to provide some background information with regards to this law 2046. And, uh, 
the team was created uh, in coordination with the Ministry of Agricultural, uh, Agriculture and Rural Development, uh, the ICBF, and uh, different entities who were, who inc that included this mandate in uh, their, um, under this uh, law. And uh, there are 14 articles that are fundamental and that are different uh, to other laws. What is most important for us is what Jan has just mentioned, which was the design of these technical guidelines. At present, we are outsourcing this operation. To comply with that objective of the entity in terms of distributing that to the different establishments, and uh, so that this uh, food can be purchased. We were thus uh, able to contribute uh, to economic reactivation beyond uh, just uh, the trading and all the aspects uh, related uh, to promoting uh, aspects uh, related to food security that also, or food safety that also uh, refers to public uh, total food procurement. We have found barriers and we have also linked up uh, to this uh, working group on um, family farming and under this uh, law 2046. And what is required there is to be able to articulate at a national and territorial level intersectorial committees to comply with law 2046, including territorial working groups involving education initiatives so that we can comply uh, with what is stipulated there and also local municipal development plans. We have 17 departments uh, that have regulations related to credits. Uh, in order to comply with law 2046 and there is also a municipal decree and we have a departmental working group in one area that uh, is enables us uh, to respond uh, to these uh, um, development uh, plans and that have been identified by Jan. Each producer has a an ID number, electronic invoicing, um, labeling aspects. And so we must uh, coordinate this uh, in this uh, phase. Uh, uh, pedagogy or training is provided so that small producers can comply with this uh, law. We not only face barriers, but we also need uh, other entities, uh, issues that have to do with financing, with uh, equipment and machinery, so that uh, we can articulate uh, uh, and coordinate uh, these women and young people so that they can reach uh, the local procurement uh, markets in order to arrive at phase uh, four. We feel that this this procurement involves around 5 billion pesos per year. And we have a, a school meals program at a national level, uh, the military, hospitals and so on. And that represents uh, or a procurement of food of over 5 billion pesos per year. And therefore, we want to comply with that law 2046 that mandates those national entities and departmental and territorial entities or mixed private uh, public uh, sectors uh, to meet uh, that uh, target of at least 30% of that food from uh, family producers uh, by each one of these national entities. And also providing technical guidelines for each one of the entities. 
what we have conducted uh, business uh, roundtables, as you can see in the photographs. You can see that the military there are meeting with uh, small producers, and they are being uh, offered uh, uh, yucca uh, so that they can uh, purchase uh, that. Uh, and this is an incentive for organizations to purchase directly from small and community farmers in order to strengthen territories, improve these networks, these production networks, and uh, strengthen the whole issue of uh, associations, which is something that we dearly require. In these uh, business roundtables that we have held, uh, well, we bring together producers and we sit them down uh, together with uh, purchasers. And they discuss aspects related to payment uh, and to regulatory compliance. Here, the recommendation of this uh, monitoring committee is to monitor public procurement spaces. This began uh, last year, and since then we have monitored uh, these spaces at uh, departmental levels, and we held uh, business uh, roundtables, uh, generating purchases for more than 21 million uh, pesos. And uh, we have heard that agro industry also plays an important role, so long as they can certify the purchase of raw materials directly from uh, family farmers and producers. Uh, and that forms part of local procu public uh, procurement. Uh, and we're also recommending that those uh, food baskets be coordinated with the minister with the departmental agricultural entities many products in uh, colombia are imported and if we were to include uh, these small producers we would certainly be promoting the local uh, production of each one of the territories and uh, this was all this is an exercise that is already underway under Decree 1623 of 2023, because that provides agencies so with the ability to provide uh, the food services uh, and logistics in the different uh, regions at a national level, <clears throat> and it also enables us to distribute uh, food products. This government wishes to change that operational model uh, so that uh, we can sell via not only by an operator that makes decisions, but rather we want the national government uh, to uh, provide certain products of the basket, of the food basket, uh, so that it can be a component uh, of this, that this be provided to the operator, that the government provides this uh, by purchasing those products directly from producers or from organizations, and not uh, by outsourcing this uh, to an operator. It is a model, as mentioned, which is fundamental for Law 2046, uh, because it stipulates uh, that uh, that uh, the idea is to provide uh, conditions for food supply. Uh, so we need to have a national entity dealing with uh, agriculture that is able to supply this and uh, that, uh, and we could provide the coordination in order to provide products. And this was done in, in 2013 and 2014. What we need is to bring those producers or those organizations uh, to the fore. This was done last year in Guajira, where we were able to provide frozen food to, at uh, minus 18 degrees centigrade uh, to the communities. Because that is not a consumption habit of some Andean communities in Guajira. Likewise, the issue of lentils, for example. They normally don't uh, eat uh, this product, and therefore we were able to establish a basket in accordance with the production of that area and also everything related to the geo different geographic areas of the department, uh, providing them with uh vegetables uh, meat uh, eggs uh, and rice uh, cereals and other products and thus uh, creating 
a more dynamic uh, local economy in the territory. And therefore, we need to have uh, monitoring uh, committees so that uh, communities uh, can be aware of the supply. But we're also articulating this with the departmental uh, agricultural authorities that are helping us to validate uh, the producers and the organizations at a national level. That is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you both for this uh, powerful presentation. We exceeded in our time, but uh, given the, the information, which is consistent with our main topic, I believe it was interesting to move on. Let me emphasize this uh, mechanism for the implementation for the creation of uh, committees. And uh, uh, like what Arnoldo said, uh, put that law into a context, not only the different realities and mechanisms uh, implemented by such law, and how this is uh, linked to other stake institutional stakeholders. That. So it's really interesting how public procurement are being implemented in, in, in Colombia. This is about the end of the session. We have uh, uh, time for a couple of questions uh, from the chat. So Cesar and uh, Jan, maybe you would like to answer them on well, the two cases, and Arnoldo already uh, answer one as to the uh, pricing uh, and how, how do you define how do you do the price setting uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the two experiences and uh, for cesar on training uh, the, the training uh, program is there a training guideline standard training guideline for processes or are these processes develop as a function of what the ministry identifies. So, so how do you arrange this? Uh, so these two questions uh, for the time being. Uh, Cesar, and then uh, Jan, and then uh, final comments just to adjourn the session. So Cesar. Okay, thank you. For question one, pricing in Guatemala, the system is uh, set forth by the law. The uh, parents, uh, associations, so they do, they do negotiate with farmers. Farmers take a reference price based on the local market. We have two big markets, uh, the capital city and the local markets. Uh, they sort of uh, guide the pricing. So that's what they're doing right now. However, we did have a problem uh, between the supply uh, and demand. We have this, we have this bag uh, issue uh, during the pandemic. The Ministry of Education would pay uh, schools I would authorize procurement. Prices went sky, went sky high. Prices rise in the large markets in Guatemala, and that had a national uh, impact. So for many farmers, it was a, a very good time because they were paying more for the product. But in terms of the negotiation, since this is prior to, I mean, suppliers were a bit affected because uh, uh, they, the, the, the negotiation was at a, a lower uh, price. There was little, there was a lack of... Uh, uh, lack of supply because prices were were too high. That uh, was the so this is uh, then up to the negotiation of the parents association and parents. And for training, we have here a plan we've uh, produced with the. Uh, or four departments that uh, are that have a, a higher growth, taking into consideration the experiences. Uh, FAO in 2013 supported uh, 
Uh, a, dep a department quite strongly. They did the piloting of uh, school meals. This is the, the San Marcos department. And they are, those are the they are spearheading. Uh, and they have a very good performance in executing the program in terms of sales. However, we took interesting elements uh, from the model we've uh, applied, and uh, this is uh, what uh, we are now including as part of uh, training, uh, not only for dissemination, but also for vendors. What strategy we use today, which is uh, important for us, uh, given the success we have had, is that we're empowering both uh, ends of the program at the Ministry of Agriculture, empowering uh, dissemination staff, but also we pay attention, uh, not only the, 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 the dissemination official, but also reaching the farmers uh, groups so as to uh, provide information. And that has allowed us for farmers to understand concepts and require from the staff certain involvement. Uh, so that's been partly the success of our methodology. And this is being adapted. This is being tailored. Uh, we can uh, uh, train people on association, marketing, production, uh, but also we can make adjustments uh, in, uh, for according to each territory uh, based on the needs of these uh, farmers group or the staff, uh, the, the, the dissemination staff, which are more familiar with the context of the area. So they share with us some peculiarities and we see how we can adapt to those peculiarities. That is how we uh, address uh, training. Okay, thank you, Cesar. Jan, pricing. How do you face the pricing uh, issue in, in Colombia? Thank you, Pedro. In Colombia, when the agency is uh, requiring uh, food, there is, a, there, is an, there is an app through the a rural planning uh, organization. It, uh, the app is called SITSA. Uh, there, together with Colombia Compreficiente, they set uh, a price base. But the organizations requiring this uh, food, when they conduct market studies, depending on the territory and uh, depending on the uh, territorial difficulties, they pick uh, that the price based uh, so as to set the final purchasing price of the product. But what happens since rural producers, uh, family farmers today are not selling directly to the procurement agencies because of the bottlenecks. So uh, they say that there is uh, an issue of a lack of pricing regulation. Operators uh, uh, meeting uh, those uh, needs uh, of supplying food to these agencies. I mean, they are taking advantage of this uh, pricing issue. We're starting to review what we can do together with SIGSA and DANE uh, so as to review the possibilities of uh, offering fair prices to uh, food producers while we uh, solve the uh, direct uh, li uh, link uh, among them so that they can sell the, the buyers. And there's another question on the definition. Who you buy from first? Uh, women, men, whoever is closer. As part of local public procurement, we have set a geographic zone. So through the information registry, the idea is to identify in the area the producers of those uh, products. Uh, if you don't find products, then uh, you have, we have to expand the search, expanding the procurement uh, area and women and youth associations here in Colombia 
uh, have uh, have an additional score, so to speak. Uh, we offer additional score uh, in terms of uh, tax exceptions uh, 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 when the, the you want to buy from them. Uh, over. Thank you. We are about to adjourn uh, the session. Arnoldo, some uh, departing uh, remarks. Not only, I know that you interacted here in the chat with some uh, so that we can uh, adjourn uh, this before we adjourn the session. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, well, every reality, every country has its own uh, challenges uh, and the design may change according to these uh, realities. This was a very, uh, this was a great experience in Guatemala, Colombia, and I believe uh, many topics are very important. But uh, how uh, the, 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 the bidding or auctioning uh, systems uh, is the, the lowest price, uh, the, the lowest the price. Okay, there are technical specifications and things, but the normal competition it goes for the lowest price. And that is a serious problem because there, uh, the, the, because of the lack of a scale in family farming. So the countries are adopting uh, different uh, different structures, but that they need to set the market or reference price and different criteria so as not to compete on price, but who is closer, uh, what is the priority audience, and then define from uh, objective uh, regulations uh, and uh, those, uh, for instance, uh, that uh, have a certain priority as part of a public policy. It's probably that's the best way to, to work. Uh, this is, uh, the, 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 the prices in Brazil are set by the, by the buyer. There is a market research you have to conduct. You have to set the procurement uh, price but uh, you will but you you, you will uh, uh, that's uh, that's uh, this is what we're doing thank you Pedro for the opportunity we're always uh, available to work with you thank you Arnoldo Cesar and Jan Romeo for your time for sharing uh, so much as uh, this, this, this information uh, so as to collaborate with other countries and other partners that are working on this uh, topic. We have to find, uh, we, have to, we would like to thank everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank our FAO offices in Guatemala and Colombia that uh, our uh, from and from uh, family farming uh, uh, office that uh, helping us in the technical platform and uh, our colleagues uh, from the Brazilian cooperation the regional office that will be with us in the next uh, session in, in June we will have a third. Uh, session of this uh, second uh, edition of the cycle where we will have uh, we'll discuss uh, school meals school feeding learning the experience from brazil uh, but also we'll uh, discuss uh, the regional perspective of the, the sustainable network uh, supported by brazilian cooperation and other cases of interest that may uh, feed uh, our discussions uh, in these uh, cycles. Again, I'd like to thank everyone. Hope oh, well, we can uh, see you in, in, in June to continue with this conversation. Have a great afternoon and a great Thursday, everyone.